welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at everything I'm bringing, every sketching material at least that I'm bringing on my upcoming trip. And this, as you see it, this is it. Not gonna bring anything more, not gonna bring anything less. And I'll talk through each of the materials. And this is of course a watercolor kit. I am not bringing my gouache at all because I just thought it would be too much of a hassle to bring it during travels. And yeah, so let's get on it. Starting off with the sketchbook, this is an Etcher hot press sketchbook. This is the size A6. Um, I've actually already filled this partially through, so I'm actually not going to bring this one. I'm going to bring a brand new one, but I thought you would want to see um, what sketches in a hot press sketchbook would look like if you've never seen them before. So the sketchbooks that I'm going to be bringing are actually new ones. Goodbye. I've got two new sketchbooks right here. This is the A5 hot press and this is the um, A6 hot press. And I believe they're both landscape. Um, these are actually from when I first got the sketchbooks, I think maybe back in 2020, back when I first got into this hobby. So um, it has been a while. So that's why I kind of want to go through them first. Um, I was thinking of bringing like two small A6s, but turns out I only have one extra A6 sketchbook. So I have to actually use a bigger one instead. But actually I don't mind using this A5 one because if you followed my trip to Indonesia last year, this is an A5, kind of like a 100% cotton sketchbook that I've completely filled up. So if you see here, I did sort of fill it in with a lot of different sketches and I really enjoyed working in this format. So maybe I would actually try and do A5 again. Um, this is landscape, but it didn't matter. And actually I managed to cover all of this uh, with just a water brush and I really enjoyed sketching in this big format. I think it allows me to take in more of my surroundings in. So I don't know. I also don't have two A5s. I literally have one A5 and one A6 hot press sketchbook left that is 100% cotton because the rest of the stuff that I have is not cotton. It's like more of those smaller Stillman and Burn sketchbooks that I've used before. These are like trips down memory lane. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find the tour of these sketchbooks up here somewhere. But these are the smaller sketchbooks that I have. And although they're great, I do think that I want a bigger sort of canvas to work with. So we are going to stick with the bigger sketchbooks for now, at least. I think for everyday carry, I do prefer these tiny ones. So I'm going to open this hot press sketchbook, start off with this, and maybe I'll have a smaller one for when I'm carrying a smaller bag. I'm not too sure, but I will carry this as a backup and I'm gonna start with this. This is random, but this, is what I started with. Um, this is how I started creating my very first sketches in gouache. So they are extremely simple, extremely saturated. And I think um, none of these are plein air, by the way. So I think this just goes to show that improvement is possible. Kind of like this. Oh, I love this actually. But yeah, these are not plein air. These are plein air. So you can just really see how um, how much I have really just grown. And I think it's always great to um, keep a little sketchbook. I didn't put the year somehow. Oh, 2020, so I'm guessing these are all 2021. But yeah, it's sketchbooks are really cool. That was a detour. Now we're moving on to um, watercolors. These are my art toolkit watercolors, which I am going to refill in a bit and I'm going to show you the footage as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash all of this off. Um, and a really quick way to do it is just to run this under the sink. Just have the water kind of wash away everything a little bit. And then I'm going to fill in everything. Actually, I'm going to take away this color because this is opera pink and it's like crusty because it's gouache. So I might fill it in with a different color, maybe like a brown, because I don't have a brown in here anywhere, which may or may not be great for me. And then what I'm going to do as well is, so you see how shiny this ultramarine is? 
And the reason for this is because, so this color is notoriously hard to re-wet. And I saw a trick, oh, I wish I captured the artist's name on Instagram where the artist just used like literally one drop of vegetable glycerin and to mix it up in here. And this makes this color super re-wettable. And that's what I'm going to do for all of this. So here is some beautiful montage of me filling up this palette. I don't know if there's anything that can be done to clean these um, rust. I don't know. I don't know if this is something that I should be concerned about. I am not concerned with them. Um, I'm more concerned about my paints, really. These are the set of 24 watercolors. It's literally the same set I've used since the very beginning of my watercolor journey. And I don't suspect that they're changing anytime soon. I'm going to fill it up to the brim. The last time I filled these up were actually when I went to my trip to Indo. So they, these watercolors really do last like a really, really long time. Vegetable glycerin. These toothpicks may come in handy. All I need is literally just one drop of this, and then I just have to mix it in. Toolkit. Next up, I have my two pencils. This is the Blackwing Natural, uh, which I think is like for drawing, it gives some really light lines. And then this is the Prismacolor Very Thin, where I've already um, kind of washed out most of the colors. And this is the Blackwing Sharpener, which I'm not gonna bring in my bag, but I'm just gonna bring with me on my luggage. And we're just gonna sharpen this real quick to prepare this for sketching. Now that these two are ready, these are good to go. Next, of course, we have brushes. So this is a water brush that I am experimenting with leaving behind, but I'm still gonna bring this water brush with me. It is well loved. Like I think there's already some sort of discoloration here. I don't know if it's from my like hands from pushing it a little bit too much. These always come in handy in like the worst case scenario. So I'm just going to keep this with me. And then these are some travel brushes. This is the one that I've been using. It's a silver, black, silver brush, black velvet. Oh, there's two colors, so I'm always so confused. Um, in a size eight. And then this is a rosemary travel brush in flat. I wish I knew which size, but I think I bought it in a second sale. So they don't come with the label, but this is a rosemary and co travel brush. And these are the brushes that I'm bringing with me. Nothing more though, just because um, because nobody has space for that. And this is kind of a trick. I don't know if it works, but I go in and then I twist it out like that. Or if you're if it's too much trouble, just dab a little bit of water. Let's do this right now. Dab a little bit of water on this brush so that it becomes kind of pointy and then you just stick it in right there. Very important, my fountain pens. 
So this is the Sailor Fude with a, I believe it's a 55 degree bent nib. One of my favorites for sketching. And then this is a Koweko Sport, which is always nice and really compact. Um, truthfully, I don't know why I would need two, but I always just love having two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna refill this because look at how low these are at the moment and we can't have that. So we're going to refill this just to make sure that these are fresh babies. So although I am refilling them from the bottle, this is the, the Atramentis Document Ink in black. It contains, it's not 45, I believe it's actually 55 milliliters, but they printed the label wrong. And I have this much document ink still left, so we are going to refill this. And when I'm traveling, I don't carry the whole bottle, but instead, this is what I carry. So I carry literally just this much ink. This is how much document ink I have. Um, this is a full five milliliter ink sample bottle and each converter in each of these fountain pens take 0 0.7 milliliter. So I get more than enough. It's like seven fills, which I will not need that much. And then these two, um, ignore this label. These are Organic Studio Nitrogen inks. And the reason that I have this is because this is my journaling pen. It is the Twistme 580 ALR in Iris. And it's got the Organic Studio ink. And this is my journal because I journal every day. On regular days at home, I use this. Actually, I just switched to a smaller B6 just to test it out. Um, but previously I used an A5. It's a 400 page Tomoe River journal. I've only filled in this many pages out because I literally just started this one. But usually I journal in an A5. And this has 128 pages instead of the 400 which makes it a little bit easier to carry around while traveling. So I might actually ditch this all together because I don't want this weight, but we'll see. Of course, a handy dandy syringe to fill in not just the water brush, but also the mister, which is really important when misting down the watercolor paint just so that they are somewhat activated. Lastly, I'm gonna carry some water. So this is the Sea to Summit X Shot water cup and it's so small and handy that I will likely just use this or I can also carry water here which is in like a airtime container this is a very gurney-esque thing to do because it's from a Nalgene bottle so what I'm gonna do is probably just leave this empty fill it up with some water at the airport just so that I have something to sketch before I get on a plane and yeah I don't know what I'm gonna do with these magnets because it's not like I can magnetize it to a surface I'm gonna test something and see if it works. If I put magnets on the back. Is it strong enough to hold? I guess if I really want to, I can do this. And this would be a little bit more sturdy. Like on my A5 book, for example, I can do this and just clip this to the side. This will be like a really sturdy setup. I have some clips with me always. So if I do that, this is a somewhat steady setup for me to sketch. And I can sketch like so. And it's like, it's got some jiggleability to it or jiggly tolerance. I'm gonna coin that, jiggly tolerance. Magnets are your best friend. But yeah, magnets, super useful. I have a pack of like 10, 20, and I just put like two of these in every single little bag I have. And in case you're interested, I don't know if you will be at this point, this is all the sketching supplies that I have. But if you're interested, I'm also going to go through my camera gear. This is the camera that I'm gonna bring with me. It's a Sony ZV-E10 with a 10 to 20 millimeter like zoom. 
it's pretty cool i'm in love with this camera i've been using this quite a bit so hopefully you love the upgrade in the youtube videos another thing that i'm gonna bring with me is the microphone for the camera this is actually really cool it's like a wireless system so because this is a native sony camera all i have to do is like plug this in like so and this is what i clip to myself if i turn it on it's immediately linked up like the lights are you can see they're blue and green they're blue and green so they're on and they're connected and this is just my camera shadow but you can see that it's already starting to record and detect audio so i will bring this with me if you've watched my camera setup video as well you will also see that i've got this tripod which i'm gonna bring to hopefully record some youtube videos this is the Ulanzian Komen Zero with the F38 quick release system, which is now what I have on every single one of my cameras and setups. So I also have this Ulanzi phone um, mount that I've added this quick release plate to because what it does, I can just take this, squeeze it right in, and then now it's locked in place. I can't do anything until I press this quick release and do that similarly with my camera i can also slot it in real quick and it's really sturdy if i want to lock it i can't press it down and it's not going to go anywhere so i love it it's been my new pride and joy the setup and it's so handy that i bring it literally every time i go film now because it's so light and that is going to be it for me today you guys thank you so much again for joining me in sharpening and preparing all of my art supplies today um let me know what's your must-have item when you're gonna go on a trip and sketch for me like part of my consideration is all of this needs to be accessible in my carry-on and that's why i'm like ditching the easel i'm ditching any sort of like gouache setup because i just need it to be extremely portable and yeah so that's why i'm doing all of this and now i'm just going to leave this baby to dry oh look at how beautiful and shiny that is you guys um but yeah thanks again for joining me and i'll catch you in the next one bye